Today we're running a Wii experiment to find out if there is a difference, a meaningful difference between inverted table sugar and standard plain old table sugar when it's used for distilling. How's it going Chasers? I'm Jesse and this is Still It. Like I said, we're talking uh, invert sugar versus standard table sugar today with a little bit of an extra kicker in there to test something different as well. Uh, basically, Bearded and Board has been sort of mentioning this, he's been putting it into videos. Uh, when I talk to him about it, he seems to think that it has advantages. And a bunch of people have asked me what my thoughts on it are as well. Now, in this video, I am going to show you quickly how to make invert sugar and um, you know how to make a product with it but the the reason that I'm making it in this video is to test it so the the exact thing that I make you know through the recipe fermentation and distillation is all lined up for me to test it it's not lined up to make the best thing you can make out of it uh, for that I would suggest jumping on over here to bedded and boards channel he's got a video uh, on invert sugar and distilling my man is getting dangerously close to 50,000 subs too. Yeah, he's at 45,000 right now. So if you haven't subscribed to him, jump on over there and, you know, help a dude out. Let's get him to, uh, let's get him to 50. That'd be pretty awesome. Anyway, on with the video. Uh, the idea with inverted sugar is that you take table sugar, which is sucrose, uh, and you boil it with an acid, which breaks it down into gluto glucose and fructose. Uh, and the, the reason that people sort of say that this could be good for distilling um, is that, well, there's, there's a few different sort of theories on why it might help. One of them being that yeast uh, basically takes sucrose and breaks it down into glucose and fructose itself before it starts, you know, going to work on any of it. The claim for home distillers and home brewers making beer, what people sort of state when they say that they want to use this stuff or that they're going to use this stuff or they have used this stuff, uh, is that it helps to remove that sugar flavor from your beverage. Uh, and actually, Bearded, once again, thank you, my friend. Uh, I've been looking to get a handle on how exactly to describe this flavor for a long time. He describes it as a sugar bowl. Uh, and I agree, I, that is, uh, the best way that I can describe it so far, along with a few other sort of descriptors that, that add to that. We can talk about that later on. Anyway, let's get stuck right into the practical side of things. So I'm going to make something, I'm going to taste it, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts at the end of the video. Let's get stuck in. First, let's make our invert sugar wash. We're going to need a large stainless pot on a stove to which we're going to add three kilograms of white table sugar and 1.5 teaspoons of cream of tartar. You can switch this out to any other acid you have, uh, citric acid or even lemon juice if you want to. Next, get two liters of water into the pot and give it a really good stirring while you're bringing it up to a simmer. We're gonna let this thing simmer for 20 minutes. Careful guys, this stuff is freaking hot, so let it cool for a little while before whacking it into the fermenter and adding cold water to get it down to 28 degrees for pitching temperature. For nutrients, we're adding three heaped tablespoons of tomato paste and a teaspoon of yeast nutrient. Our inverted sugar test wash uh, is ready to have the yeast pitched and to start this little experiment, but to really make it an experiment, and to make it interesting, I'm gonna make two other things at the same time. Uh, the first is a control, and I'm gonna do exactly the same wash, but instead of inverting the sugar, I'm literally just gonna dump the same amount, three kilos of table sugar into the bucket, dissolve it, add the other stuff to it, get it ready to pitch. Uh, the third thing, which I think is kind of interesting, is I wanna see if boiling, simmering, cooking the sugar for a little bit longer until it starts to develop some color, whether the flavor that comes along with that color development in the sugar itself will translate over to the final spirit. Right now I've got another pot of inverted sugar boiling away and this one's been boiling for one hour. So I'm gonna do once again exactly the same thing, exactly the same wash. The only thing left to do now is to pitch the yeast into each of those buckets and let them ferment out. For this test, I'll be using the Angel Baker's yeast, uh, not the Angel Yellow label, different stuff. It's just like standard Baker's yeast, but it is a nice one. I enjoy using it. So I'll see you again sometime in the next few weeks. 
After a week and a half, the inverted sugar version had fermented out dry down to a touch below one. Uh, the dark version fermented down to 1.005 and the standard table sugar had fermented down to 1.007. So I gave the two ones that were a little bit stuck, a little bit of a shake up, checked the pH, that was fine, uh, bumped the temperature up a little bit and gave them a little bit of extra yeast, waited for another two days and nothing had changed so I decided to just run them as is. Now I know that that is not exactly comparing apples with apples in some ways but my nutrient regime on this was uh, intentionally borderline crap <laughs> and the reason for that is I wanted to see if um, you know something would ferment better or faster than the others and the inverted sugar one definitely did so potentially you could say that this is some anecdotal evidence to say that invert sugar ferments out easier I'm pretty reluctant to say that but it's interesting nonetheless you could also potentially say that we created some unfermentable sugars due to the Maillard reactions creating the darker syrup does that account for that extra 0.005? Perhaps. <laughs> In any case, it's time to distill the stuff. Let's head over to the still and I'll show you what's happening. All three of these will be run as similar as each other as I can possibly get them. And I've decided to run them with three plates. So it's a one and done three plate distillation. Why have I decided to do that when, you know, three plates one and done is not exactly what you want to do if you're trying to make a nice clean vodka. I get that. The reason for that is that I wanted to sit kind of in the middle ground between distilling a, a whiskey and distilling a vodka or a rum in a vodka or something like that because I want to see how this applies to different things. Uh, I want to open up my ability to taste differences if they are there. And my thinking is that if there are differences of taste in the, in the wash themselves, when you distill them, distilling them to a slightly lower ABV, a slightly dirtier distillation will give me a better chance to be able to taste the differences between the two. I'm actually right now on the last distillation. Uh, on the first distillation, I did it to taste. And I took note of all the volumes for heads, hearts, and tails. And for each subsequent run, I'm keeping those volumes in mind and trying to keep to them as close as possible, but I am also tasting just a little bit to make sure that I'm making you know, correct cuts and not giving one spirit an advantage over the other. But I wanted to reduce the amount that I'm tasting now. I want to reduce um, the information I have on this as much as possible. Unfortunately, I can't do that entirely unless I just didn't taste the cuts which seems silly to me. Anyway let's uh, finish this up and we can get to testing and see if there really is a difference between inverted sugar and non-inverted sugar when it comes to distillation. That was a whole lot of fun making you know three different things and uh, not having to record a whole lot about it. This, that's not what this video is about. Uh, it was cool for me just to, to be able to spend some time with the still and not have to record every second of it. Uh, but anyway guys uh, before we get into the results and my thoughts on all of this, I need to say huge, huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for, I mean, just being really quality human beings and helping me out. So thank you. Thank you guys so much. Uh, for everyone else out there, if you're finding value in these videos and you'd like to help directly contribute to the channel, uh, you can go to chasethecraft.com slash support to find out all the different ways you can help out. Uh, one being Patreon, if it's right for you, uh, and the other being... Um, you know, you can pick yourself up a Chase the Craft clean can glass. This one's not a Chase the Craft clean can glass. This is one that was just sitting next to me. This is a plain one. You get the idea. <laughs> Once I finished distilling those things, I proofed them, all three of them, down to 40%, and I was quite meticulous about doing that uh, fairly accurately. I then let them sit for 24 hours uh, just to, to, you know, let that proofing chaos calm down a little bit uh, and then I got my wife to blind me on a set of triangle tests. I'm not going to go into that right now. If you guys want to know more about triangle tests um, let me know in the comments and maybe we'll make a video about it. Uh, but basically the idea is that you put three glasses in front of you. I don't know what's in those glasses. Two of them are the same. One of them is different and I've got to pick the odd one out. The only thing a triangle test does is um, tell you whether or not I can actually tell the difference between two things, whether or not there is actually a difference, whether or not there is a perceivable difference in, in two different products. That's what we're looking at in a triangle test. Doesn't tell you if it's good, doesn't tell you if it's bad. Uh, I just wanted to know, could I actually tell the difference between the two damn things? And um, the two I'm talking about right here is the, uh, the standard table sugar and the inverted 
sugar. I had 10 of these in a row. So every time I'd reset, my wife would come in and reset all the glasses, so I had no idea what was going on. Um, and I got seven out of 10 correct, which is really freaking interesting. So if uh, it was pure chance, and I was just guessing, or I couldn't tell the difference between them at all, statistically, uh, I would expect to get 3.333 reoccurring uh, out of 10 correct, so either three or four, basically. The fact that I was sitting all the way up at seven would suggest that statistically, yes, there was actually, you know, proven to be a difference between the two. Uh, but, but, it wasn't 10 out of 10, was it? Uh, and I have to say, after I'd finished the tests, when I sat down with the two glasses that I knew which were which and tasted them, it felt like night and day. <laughs> It really did. I felt like, how could I ever not pick the difference between these two things? Uh, but the fact that I didn't get 10 out of 10 shows that that's just, you know, um, your perception, your bias, your, your mind playing freaking tricks on you. I also should notice too, team, that there was a slight quality difference between the two. The standard table sugar one was probably a slightly better vodka, even though they were both kind of average because of the way I distilled them. It could have been that I was subconsciously using that very, very slight difference um, to pick the difference between the two rather than actually the sugar. I just, I just want that noted just to, to be fair. The process of doing it this way was actually kind of cool because I took tasting notes as I went. Um, and it helped me really organize my thoughts on what the table sugar flavor is in products. Enough with the stat stuff and the technical talk. I'm guessing you want to know what the hell I think of the two and the sort of the, the tasting notes that I got from both. Is it an advantage to use inverted sugar or not? Uh, so first of all, let's describe the, the table sugar. And right at the beginning of the video, I sort of said that Better Than Board described this to me as sugar bowl. And from what I, what I took from that is, you know, if you're, you're passing the sugar bowl down the table and you get this kind of waft of sugar, white sugar smell as it goes past. Uh, and I think that's a great descriptor for the flavor side of things. But there's more to it than just that to me. I get that flavor on both the nose and the palate from the table sugar version uh, and I have been able to pick, uh, people have given me samples before and I've been able to say uh, that's UJSSM and it's not because I know UJSSM really well, it's just because I tasted corn and I tasted this thing that I'm describing now which is really hard to articulate. It's this, it's the smell of table sugar um, but it, then it turns into something much less desirable to me. It, it, the, the aftertaste is thin, it's piercing, it's insipid, it fades away to nothing, it lefts, leaves you wanting more, it has the, almost like the feeling of sourness or acid in your mouth, very faintly, but without the, the flavor, if that makes sense. It's just, I don't know man, it, 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 it just leaves the beverage feeling like a shell of itself in a small way. It's like a, a soup that doesn't have enough stock in it. <laughs> it's it's just, just like, there's not enough of what should be in there and it's not there. Does that make sense? Uh, on the flip side, the invert sugar version helped to deal to that a lot. So I still get that sugar bowl flavor, that sugar bowl taste a little bit at the beginning. It's not as much, it's still there. But the thing that's really improved to me is that Instead of it fading away to that weird emptiness, it's, it's game's been lifted a few notches. It's, it's slightly more, it has, it has more of an impression of the sweetness that you would expect after smelling and tasting that sugar bowl effect. It finishes more like a Cadbury Crunchy. Now I have to say, the difference between the two is pretty small. Like I said, I only got 7 out of 10. I didn't get it. 10 out of 10 times. Uh, and I knew exactly what I was looking for. I knew that that was the flavor that was different in this test. Uh, so if I gave it to, you know, 15 other people, God damn, I wish I could actually do that, but I technically can't. Um, maybe they wouldn't have found any difference at all. Um, anyway, my point being is it's a small, but significant improvement. Uh, in my opinion, after doing this test. All right, so, so now we need to talk about the uh, the extra one where we let it boil for a significantly longer amount of time. Uh, you know how I just said that the invert sugar version 
was more like uh, Honeycomb, where it had that, that more rich Maillard reaction finish to the sugar. It's even more so. Um, so it's heading into, uh, I guess, like golden syrup territory. So think darker than Honeycomb, um, not towards like full on molasses or anything like that, uh, but it's pretty interesting. Once again, it is a super, super subtle effect. Is it what you want to do for vodka? But doing invert sugar and boiling it for a long ass time to whack into your UJSSM? That could be cool. So am I going to use inverted sugar and stuff going forward? Yeah, probably guys. Uh, just keep in mind that this is a sample size of this guy. This big hairy dude that does YouTube videos for a living. Don't know if you can trust him, to be honest. My point being is uh, this is you know, far from the be all end all on the topic. Uh, if you've tried inverted sugar, even if it's completely anecdotal, um, thoughts, evidence, whatever you wanna call it, drop them in the comments down below. I would be interested to see what you have to say on the topic. Uh, and if you can, if you can, man, uh, do this test at home, make this test better. Drop those results in the comments down below too. So when people come back and look at this video in a year's time, two years time, uh, they have the advantage of you adding to the conversation as well. All right guys, stay classy. Don't be a dick. Keep on chasing the craft and I'll see you next time. See ya.